Hello and welcome to the Stitch With Me in 2024 April prompt. As usual, all previous prompts, as well as the instructions for creating the slow stitch snippet roll, will be linked below. Well, so let's get right to the prompt. Today's prompt is relic. Now, a relic is something that's old, that is cherished or adored in the current day. Now, you can have a lot of fun with this. You don't have to take it literally. You can consider somebody a relic, or you can have all different ways to do this. I enjoyed creating this prompt because I created Stonehenge, the big stone relic in the UK. And I used crayons to create the shading because I wanted to piece it out of fabric, but still have a kind of three-dimensional look. A little abstract, but I really enjoyed this process. And I'll show you that technique in the video. I have other videos using crayons on fabric, and I'll link those as well. Now, at the end of the video, I have a little surprise. As you can tell, my hair is very short for my treatment. And I wanted to show you a picture, a throwback picture, of the last time my hair was short. It wasn't quite this short, but it was the 70s, and well, you might get a kick out of it. So let's get started with the April prompt. So this is a fun one. For using the prompt relic, I can't wait to add to my snippet roll. I'm really pleased with the color scheme. Every now and again, I introduce a new color or texture. That seems to be working for me, so I'm gonna keep going with it. For relic, I started out by stamping the word relic just on my muslin, like I do always, using my rubber stamps and heat setting them. And then I decided I'm gonna do a relic of Stonehenge. My brother just recently went to the UK and Stonehenge was on his list. He was always just fascinated by it. We did a lot of UK TV together and hiking, he would build stone cairns, and I, I just, that's my go-to for relics. So you could look at relics in other ways as well. It's an object surviving from an earlier time, whether historical or sentimental, and some people are considered relics. So really have fun with this one. I'm going to move over here, and then I chose my colors for Stonehenge. I have the beautiful gray stones here, I have a little white to put on the background of my prompt. And then I wanna use this lace just for a texture element. Now, the one thing that I'm using now is crayons. This is a beautiful way to shade the stones because I want my stones to look gray and weathered. I have the gray fabric as my background. I have a little bit slightly darker gray, even darker gray, white, because I just wanna go lighter than that gray. Then I have a very light green, a seafoam green and a tumbleweed. These are just earth tones to make that shadowing and texture, which I'll also do with stitches. So that's kind of a fun way to start this project. I love to have something new in my work as I go. It keeps it exciting. So for now, I'll set aside my prompt and my lace, and I wanna just create that's Stonehenge, and I'm just gonna make the two tall stones. I believe they're called Sarzen stones, and maybe I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, which is very real that I might be, but I'm gonna have the two stones, the large 25 ton stones with the block on top of it, just indicative of Stonehenge. So I wanna decide how tall I want them to be. Now on this gray fabric that I've been using throughout my piece, I just put some heat and bond which is just a fusible adhesive. And this way I can iron down my piece. I'm gonna stitch over it anyway, but this just gives me a little less fraying and a little more control with my piece. It's a completely optional step. And now I'm just gonna create my stones. So I want two tall stones. You don't have to be perfectly shaped. And then I need a large stone on top. So I'll cut these out. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. In fact, it's probably preferable if they're not. So I'll just take this one and kind of change it up just a little bit. There, a little bit of a difference there. And now I need the stone on top. So there I have my basic stone hedge. Oh, I love that. Now it's time before I adhere it down, I wanna use my crayons to start coloring it just to make some shading. So I'm gonna start with that 
medium gray. I have two grays and then some earth tones in white. Take it off my little piece here. Now I just want to add some shading to it. I can always add shading after it's attached to the fabric, but I'm just going to start by little circles here. The top, this is the lightest gray. I like to go in with my lightest colors first, do a little bit of the edge. It's very subtle. Just let it blend out gently. Do a little bit of coloring on the edges as well. Then I'll come in with that darker gray. Again, a nice light layer, creating some shadow, maybe a few cracks in the stone, just to make it look aged. So I'll play around with this. And the same thing up here, just add a few cracks, a few discolorations. And you can see it's starting to come along, a little more depth. Now I'm gonna take this tumbleweed, it's just a very light beige brown. I just wanna add a little bit of pigment here, just a little color, subtle, makes the rock look a little worn, maybe a little aged. I'll do the same with the sea foam. A little bit of moss maybe, or algae growing. Just enough to give it some realistic appearance. Lastly, I'll take a little bit of white, just put that down as well. Gives a highlight. I'm gonna take my darker color again and go underneath where there'll be just shadow from that stone up top and just deepen that. Now I'm fairly happy with how this is coming out. I can start to assemble my piece on my fabric. So I have my stones and my lace. I wanna take a little bit of this lace just to give an interest to the background, a little texture. Figure out how I'm going to do this. Maybe just have it like that. I'll cut this up, trying to get rid of that straight edge somewhat. So I'm still not happy with this edge. I'm gonna clear it out. It's a little too finished for me. The same thing on this side. Yes, I prefer that. And now I can put relic up top, maybe on the side. I'll give that some thought. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attach this lace just on the edge. And then I'm gonna take my iron and press these stones down. But because they have the crayon on them, I'm gonna to need to cover that with paper towel. I'll show you that process. Okay, so I have my lace stitched, and now I'm ready to attach my little stone structure here. I'm just gonna remove on the back of all of the pieces that little paper wrapper from the fusible adhesive, which is totally optional, you don't need to use it. And I'm gonna start just by adhering those stones down. This way I can get the proper placement for the stone on top. Now, because I have that crayon on, I need to remove the wax from that crayon. So I have just a paper towel here. I'm taking my hot iron set for cotton and just pressing it onto that area. This will adhere the fusible adhesive as well as melt that pigment and that wax, and I'll be able to take some of it up onto that paper towel. Now, I didn't use a lot of crayon, so not a lot is showing. It's a little bit showing. So I keep doing this until no more pigment comes off. I use the paper towel to protect my iron and to absorb the wax. So pretty happy with that. Now I can take my little top stone, set it exactly where I want. Again, set that paper towel down and adhere it. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. On my little piece here, my little prompt labeling, the white has a little bit of adhesive on the back. It just happened to be that way. So now I can decide where I want to put that. I think I want to put it just like that. Trim this down a little, and I'll adhere that into place. I still have to stitch this prompt down. 
but my little background piece is in place. So now we can start the stitching process and really bring this to life. I'll set aside my little prompt here and I'm gonna stitch around the edge of the stones and just little stitches here to add texture. I'm using one strand of embroidery floss on the gray because I want just a really subtle effect. So I'll start by going around and adding that beautiful stitching texture. So I'm really pleased I added the stitches. It gives a little bit of texture. I could have taken other thread, those colors that I use, the earth tones and the darker gray, and added more shadowing, but I really feel like the crayon is effective. So now I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna stitch down my little label here and add some interesting stitches that I did on previous sections, just to tie it all together. I'll show you how that looks. So here I have my completed prompt for April. I'm really pleased with it. I love the way it looks. And I have the rest of the snippet roll to continue to add to as my prompts progress. Can't wait to see what you do on the Facebook group. I just love seeing your work and I wanna tell you how much I appreciate it. So that's how I created the April prompt for Stitch With Me in 2024. I can't believe how this year is flying by. I really enjoy creating the prompt with crayons. It's something a little different. I'll probably use it again in this year's prompt challenge. Now I really wanted to mention that I appreciate all the well wishes and encouragement throughout my journey here with dealing with cancer. It's been such an uplifting experience and I appreciate each and every comment, each and every heart that's sent. It really means the world to me. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. And here's that picture I promised, my throwback picture from the 1970s. As you can see, I was a little mop head, and I had light hair and eh, kind of a rascally grin. So thanks for watching.